Hey everybody, welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Sid and today I'm going to be ranting about Notion AI and why it's not as cool as it could be. So first of all, for those of you who aren't aware, Notion recently came up with a feature called Notion AI that they describe as being able to leverage the limitless power of AI in any Notion page, write faster, think bigger, and augment your creativity like magic. Now, the problem with Notion AI to me is, first of all, it seems really cool at a first glance. You're able to brainstorm ideas. You're able to come up with a bunch of different cool ideas. You're able to write rough drafts for things off the bat. But the problem with this is that a lot of work that's related to text isn't generally centered just around text generation, right? A lot of the hard work comes from editing this text, figuring out what text is useful and all of that. So the more text you have, the harder your job becomes. And if you're working in a notion that you kind of treat like a wiki, if you have a bunch of different people using Notion AI in different spaces, then you're going to end up with a lot of duplicated text probably, and you might not have any idea or any way to link those duplicate texts until you look through your entire Notion, which leads to a lot more work than you might expect. But in certain cases, of course, just being able to generate these rough drafts, being able to generate these lists of ideas will obviously be very, very helpful. Now, Notion is probably using something called GPT-3 or another large language model as its back end. And let's look at that right now. So GPT-3 is basically a large language model that came out a few years ago, I think maybe two years, and it's useful for a lot of things. And a lot of people decide to use it as a text generator. So they might go and say, write a blog post. Wow, I'm really bad at typing. Write a blog post. Wow. Write a blog post about cats. And then it'll go ahead and generate something about cats, which is really cool, really interesting. But, you know, as somebody who's been playing around with GPT-3 for a while and a lot of other like software engineers have, this starts to become less and less interesting the more you toy around with it because GPT-3 can actually do a lot more interesting things. Here's some terminology. The text that you input is called the prompt and whatever you get back is, you know, your result. So if you're looking at this, you can see that the only way you can use GPT-3 is by implementing text or inputting text and then getting text in return. But if you think a little bit more about it, there's a lot of different tasks that you can do through the idea of, um, you know, text to text. There's a lot of instructions. There's a lot of cool things that can be represented in text. And there's a lot of interesting features that you can add. So for example, there are some programs like GitHub Copilot that use a version of a large language model that allow you to come up with Python or other coding scripts. So come up with a Python script that squares a number. Now, obviously, this is a simple example, but you know, it can do it. And that's cool. Now, why am I talking to you about this? Why is this related to how Notion AI isn't as cool as it could be? Let's refer to somebody called Linus on Twitter, who's really smart, really interesting to talk about why productivity tools shouldn't just blindly implement these large language models. So he says that people need to be more thoughtful building products on top of large language models. The fact that they generate text is not the point. Large language models are cheap, infinitely scalable, predictably consistent black boxes to soft human-like reasoning. And that's just an interesting way of saying you're not being interesting by just doing text generation. There's a ton of more features that you can add if you just really use your creativity a little bit. And I think Notion, the people at Notion know this and why this Notion AI is only an alpha. I'm assuming that within a year from now, Notion AI is going to be able to do some really interesting things. But as he mentions, like I mentioned, a vanishingly small slice of knowledge work has the shape of text in text out. The real alpha is not in generating text but in using this new capability and wrapping it into jobs that have other shapes. Text generation is the best text generation in the best large language model products will be an implementation detail as much as backend APIs are for current software. So this is imagine just using the Google Maps API or the Spotify API. That's basically what text generation is. There's not a lot of effort to put in. You just hook it up to your large language model, send in the input from the user to that model in the backend and get the result back. You don't have to do much work. So it's a little bit lazy, not to be rude, but it's also not as awesome as it could be. And again, the people at Notion probably know this. Willy nilly spraying the GPT-3 next token prediction powder on your tool product is a recipe for disaster outside of narrow workflows where text is the asset being produced. Text like code is a liability, not an asset. An organization should strive to own as little text as necessary to express their information and accomplish tasks all very good ideas, all very good advice. And he goes on to mention a lot more in this thread, and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. But there's another thread on Twitter where this guy, Max Musing, talks about how he's been using GPT-3 in his startup 
to do cool things. And some of these things can actually be directly ported over to Notion. So he says it works for almost any string to string type function. Yeah, we mentioned that we've covered that already. But here he has something where he creates a table view. And then he uses GPT-3 to generate an emoji based on the table name. So first of all, Notion can implement this directly. And I know this because I have to go through and figure out what the right emoji is for all these things. Obviously, this is a trivial feature, but Notion can do this exact same thing. If you do this and say, you know, let's just look at GPT-3 and see how hard it might be to actually do this. I don't know if GPT-3 actually comes up with emojis, um, but I have a feeling that, right? So it comes up with emojis like this. What emoji is suitable for YouTube? And then it comes up with these emojis all of a sudden really easily. So again, this is something that could be a little feature that Notion adds, not maybe as a product of Notion AI, but maybe as something that's just useful and just happening in the back end. So it makes the user experience more interesting. This is not necessarily completely difficult work, but it is something um, that would require just a little bit of ingenuity in the way that you engineer these prompts. The users, the end users should not be having to do this prompt engineering that should be done by the companies that are of offering these services. So companies like Lex who are doing writing, right? They're coming up with writing ideas in, you know, a new word processor for text generation. Very cool, but there's a lot more features that could be added to make it easier. And I haven't used Lex that much, so I don't know all the features they have, but Notion AI right now is very limited as an alpha usually is. Now, again, he does other things where he's like, um, pick the most relevant columns from a table to show in your view. Again, this is something that could be done in Notion, when you have all these databases with assignment names, whatever, you know, people use databases in Notion for a lot of different things. So you can use a feature like this in Notion AI. You need to treat, or companies need to treat GPT-3 as something that they can use to accomplish a lot of like human centric tasks, tax, tasks, whatever. But basically, if you have a task, right, that would be seemingly simple for a human to do, but might be difficult or complex to code directly, you can probably get that done with GPT-3 with a little bit of clever engineering and a little bit of, you know, just smart ways to prompt the machine into doing the right thing. It's a little wishy-washy, but it is doable. And there's a lot of cool companies out there that are working on things like this. Basically, in short, I'm just saying that Notion AI implementing GPT-3 as just text generation is not awesome. It's a little bit lazy. And I'm sure that the cool people at Notion can do things better than this. And there's, you know, there's definitely good enough engineers there to come up with better ideas, right? You don't need to be prompting GPT-3 to come up with this text. It's cool, but it's not the main feature, like I mentioned 5 million times already. And like Linus has already mentioned, there are more interesting things that can be done. And I think Notion should do them. Um, and you know, what if we forced everybody to do every little task in this narrow pipe called prompting? No, do better. Prompting should not be what your end users are doing. Figure that out when you're developing it, right? Other cool examples of GPT-3 being used are people that are using GPT-3 to explain papers. So I think it's literally called explain a paper. Um, yeah, explain paper. So you upload a paper, highlight confusing text, and you get an explanation. That's really cool. Like I do this. And then, you know, it's loading um, and I ask a question. Uh, the dominant sequence transaction models are the most common models to use. It's a great way to do so many different things to improve a user's experience to any task related to te text and even tasks that aren't related to text that you can then map to tasks that are related to text. There's so many interesting things that can be done. And if you are watching this video, I highly encourage you to build something that could, you know, use GPT-3 to do things like this. Heck, if you're watching this video, make an extension for Chrome that just lets you, you know, auto generate this icon using the text for the page, right? I'm sure you could do that. I, heck, if you won't do it, I'll do it. But I'm also kind of lazy myself. And I'm working on some other side projects right now. But what I'm saying is, there's so many interesting things that can be done with GPT-3. And limiting yourself to just thinking in the text generation way is not great. And I know that a lot of people, I know that everybody really, can come up with better ideas than this. And I'm pretty confident that the Notion team will as they advance Notion AI. But as Notion AI stands right now, it's not really that interesting. You might as well just use GPT-3 by yourself. Um, the only real benefit is that you don't have to pay uh, for Notion AI because GPT-3 costs like, I don't know, 
two cents per thousand words. It's not really that expensive. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this rant. My usual videos are a lot more focused on this, but this was just a rant that I wanted to use and get to use my new camera. Hope you like the quality, but thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.